since my servant commanded thee, turn not for me to the right hand or to the left. Turn not for me to the right hand or to the left. You know, these are days when churches are modifying their doctrines. And we say it's a new period, 21st century. And he said, what our forefathers believed, we cannot believe that now. The way our forefathers lived, we cannot live like that now. It's a time of modification. This is a period of mutilating the gospel. But the Lord is telling us, he says, I'm standing by you. And if I'm going to remain by you, you don't modify anything. Or edit anything. Or change anything. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Keep to the whole word of God that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. We're going to prosper. We're going to succeed. And nothing will make us cringe or fall back in Jesus' name. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what kind of success? Good success. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm telling you that these are the days of his power. The days when the Lord himself is going to make every one of us that believe in him victorious. Isaiah chapter 41, I'm reading from verse 10. Manifold promises for the painful hour. Whatever you are going through today, there is a promise for you. And when you hold on to that promise, it will bring you out of that problem. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. The one that never lost any battle said, I am with thee. The creator of the heavens and the earth said, I am with thee. The great physician that heals every sickness, he says, Fear thou not, I am with thee. The master of storm. And the master of all circumstances, he assures you, he says, fear thou not, because I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that are angry against thee, incensed against thee all they that are kind of heated up against you shall be ashamed and confounded they shall be as nothing they shall be as nothing 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 you know when people don't want to worship the Lord, I told you before, somebody is threatening them. Somebody is saying, you dare not do that. Now, if somebody who is in an entity or nobody or nothing threatens you, and you know that the power is posting about is nothing. The authority is posting about is nothing. You don't want to allow that to disturb you, disturb your mind. Because nobody can take away from the blessing God wants to give you at this retreat. And nobody can injure you or hurt your life. Because all the people that get angry against you, they hurt themselves. They'll become as nothing. Behold, all they, how many of them? All they, how many of them? All they that were incensed and angry against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive, they that fight, they that war against thee shall, shall perish. What have you got to fear when the Lord has given you such a promise, manifold promises for the painful hour? 
thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing. Second time, and as a sin of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. The Lord will help you. Fear not, that one Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord, and the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh all the mountains, and bear them small, and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the wild wind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. What will you do in the Lord? What are you going to do in the Lord? Thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. That's the promise the Lord has given us, and the Lord is going to fulfill that promise in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7 through to verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7. For the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. Say not, I am a youth. Say not, I am a babe. Say not, I am inexperienced. Say not, I am weak. You are no more weak, you are strong. Because you are going to receive the power for your hour, even during this retreat, even tonight in Jesus' name. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of what? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. That's what you're afraid of. You don't know their thoughts. You don't know their mind. You don't know their heart. Or you see their face. And you think that because their face is rough and tough, therefore they're mighty and powerful. Not necessarily. So Jeremiah or any other person there, be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Where is the word of God today? Where is the word of the Lord today? Speak it out then. If the word is in your mouth, when you say sinner, speak out that word. When you see somebody is sick, speak out that word. When you see somebody is discouraged, the word is in your mouth. Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. Speak it out to them. And the word you speak out will solve their problems in Jesus' name. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Verse 17. Thou therefore get up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confirm thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord will deliver you, deliver us all in Jesus' name. Dangerous times, but wonderful time. Perilous times, but time of power, time of authority. 
and time when the power of God will be manifested through you and through me and through us and through this church in Jesus' name. We've seen a lot of miracles before we're going to see more. We've seen victory before we're going to see greater victory. We've seen authority be manifested in the name of Jesus before. We're going to see more authority as the days go by. Coming year, this coming year is going to be a year of power, a year of achievement, a year of authority, a year of accomplishment in Jesus' name. Because it says, I give unto you power. Let me read it to you in Luke chapter 10. The power for your hour. The power for your hour. And whatever the painful hour, the perilous hour, we're going to have the power that will match the problem of the day. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld, I beheld, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. We will not fall, they will fall. I said, we will not fall, they will fall. Even their master will fall. Their commander will fall. Their captain will fall. He said, I see, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And now comes something for our hour, for this hour. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I pray that every one of us will be participants and recipients of that great power in Jesus' name. Point number three now, marvelous preservation in the perilous hour. Marvelous preservation in the perilous hour. This difficult time, the Lord will protect you specially. Preserve you specially. And all the things happening to the people of the world will not come near you in Jesus' name. It will be on the right hand, on left hand. But where you are, the wrath of men will not fall there in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 5. The Lord will make a difference. A difference between the people of God and the people of the world. Exodus chapter 11, verse 5. Exodus 11, verse 5. For all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the of the maid servant that was behind the meal, and all the firstborn of the beasts, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But here comes the difference. You are going to be different. Protection will be around you. Preservation will be for you. The calamities happening to the people of the world will not happen to you in Jesus' name. But in verse 7, against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move a tongue against man or beast. That she may know that how that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. The Lord will put a difference between us and the people of the world in Jesus' name. Their fire will not burn us. Their river will not drown us. Their trouble will not perplex us. The sicknesses will not come upon us. 
we are going to be different. The protection of the Lord will be ours. The preservation of the Lord will be ours. And the Lord will surround us like a mighty wall, a mighty wall of fire. And all the seas that try to hurt us, all the seas that try to come against us, they'll be burnt in the fury and the furnace of his fire in Jesus' name. And when the people of the world, when they kindle their fire, thinking they are going to burn us up, they will not burn us up, only their property will burn in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 15. This was a perilous hour for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A painful hour for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was a trying time because the king of the land, Nebuchadnezzar, threatened them. And he actually wanted to carry out a threat. And then he said, If you think you're serving God, if you think there's a God somewhere that will deliver you, think about this again. Because I've done this to other people before and they were not free. I burnt them up. And then we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is your own day. I said, This is your own day. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are preserved, you are going to be preserved in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Now, if you be ready. At what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbot, sultry, and dulcima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, that will be all right, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the same, in, in the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands can you imagine a mortal man whose breath is in his nostrils can you imagine a mortal man who when he sleeps he forgets himself can you imagine a mortal man a man of yesterday challenging the God of eternity and saying, who is that God? That's what people are today. They don't have any respect for God. But the hour has come. God will prove himself. Yeah. And it's like him. If you get saved, we'll persecute you. If you remain a Bible believer, we're going to throw something at you. And he said, when we throw it at you, we're going to curse you. And do this and that. They say, who is that God? I'm happy they are asking that question. The Lord is going to show them tonight who that God is. The same God that drowned Pharaoh and those Egyptians in the Red Sea, that God is still alive. And the same God that made all those Amalekites to be, to be totally forsaken and defeated, that God is still alive. And the same God that made the Assyrian army, 185,000 of them to perish in one night, that God is still alive. The same God that made Nebuchadnezzar go into the forest in the bush like an animal, that God is still alive. Look at this man challenging the Almighty God. And if your enemies challenge the Almighty God, you rejoice because you know. This painful hour is going to be a victorious hour. It's going to be a powerful hour. And the Lord is going to prove himself strong on behalf of everyone believing the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. He asked the question, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fairy furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hands, O king. He will deliver you. I said he will deliver you. 
and he will deliver us all together as a church in Jesus' name. But if not, be it known unto you, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What they were saying is, you can make your fire not to even light at all, not to be kindled at all. But even if he allows it to be kindled, even if he doesn't deliver us before we get into the furnace, all the same. We're not going to serve your idol. We're not going to worship your image. We're going to stand by the creator of the heavens and the earth. You will stand in Jesus' name. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was angry. You know, sometimes you say, I must be careful now. I mustn't allow Nebuchadnezzar to be angry. Go ahead. Let him get angry. Because the anger of man will reveal the glory and the power and the majesty of God. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed. Again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And therefore, he spake and he commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wrong to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his kingdom, in his army, to bind Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning furry furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and their horses and their hearts and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning furry furnace. Did they cry? Did they complain? Did they regret? Did they plead? Did they beg Pharaoh? I wonder for you, are going, you are begging the persecutor and begging the enemies of righteousness. I'm begging the people that say, we're going to throw you in there. Let them do it. And then we're going to see the mighty power of the Lord. That God says, I am God, I change not. Therefore, the people of God are not consumed. Our God remains the same today. I said our God remains the same today. Look at the next verse. Therefore, verse 22. Because the king's commandment was urgent, and the phone is exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took, the, that took off Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the enemies of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that died, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did they die? You will not die. I said you will not die. You still remain in the faith even after they've done their worst. That's why it says, and then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bowed into the midst of the bony, furry furnace. Then they cut nasal. The king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast a man bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said 